Let's talk about the assassination. Qasem Soleimani was seen as the second most powerful man in Iran. He was killed in Iraq when the Americans blew up his convoy using a drone. This is the equivalent of the Iranians assassinating the U.S. Secretary of Defense. Iran is promising revenge. So who was Major General Qasem Soleimani? Why is there talk of a possible war between Iran and the U.S.? And was the attack even legal? I'm Sandra Gatman. Welcome to a special episode of Start Here. You only have to look at the size of Qasem Soleimani's funeral to appreciate just how important he was to people in Iran. <laughs> Soleimani was the leader of Iran's powerful Quds Force. It's the paramilitary wing of the Revolutionary Guard Corps, and it's active mostly outside of Iran. The U.S. considers the force a terrorist organization. Now, what Iran has sought to do is uh, create some form of influence in the region. Now, they've managed to do that in Yemen, in Lebanon, in Iraq, and in Syria. And our good force has been credited with establishing that. He was credited with uh, fighting off ISIS and protecting Iran's borders. It was felt that if he had not made that intervention, then ISIS would have taken over large swathes of Iraq. The administrations of George W. Bush and Barack Obama both considered assassinating Soleimani. Both rejected the option as too risky. Trump, though, pulled the trigger. Last Friday, Soleimani landed in Iraq at Baghdad airport. He was with an Iraqi paramilitary commander named Abu Mahdi al muhandis and other Iraqi officials. Circling somewhere high above them was a Reaper, a U.S. military remote-controlled killer drone. It's unlikely they would have seen or heard it. To give you an idea of what these men were facing, here's video of a drone missile being tested. And here's some amateur footage from Baghdad that reportedly shows the actual missile strike on the convoy. they probably died instantly. Trump did not inform Congress about these plans to kill Soleimani in advance. This is very common for the Pentagon to present multiple military options to presidents in times of crisis. The Pentagon did not think, allegedly, that Trump was going to select that option, but that is exactly what he did. So why strike now? The Trump administration says there was an imminent threat. It's the only time an American president is allowed to order a military strike on another country without congressional approval. We took action last night to stop a war. We did not take action to start a war. Under U.S. law, Trump had 48 hours to explain himself to Congress in writing. And he did in a classified letter. But House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says it raises more questions than answers. Democrats basically saying, what is the evidence that you have? What is that intelligence? And so far, the T Trump administration is not wanting to release that publicly. The assassination of Qasem Soleimani didn't just come out of nowhere. The US and Iran have been at each other for a while now, starting with Trump's decision in 2018 to pull out of the Iran nuclear deal. That led to the reimposition of US sanctions designed to cripple Iran's economy, and Iran retaliated by resuming uranium enrichment. And ever since then, there's been trouble in the Gulf region. Iran was blamed for attacks on oil tankers. The Revolutionary Guard shot down a U.S. surveillance drone. Then, a Saudi oil refinery, the world's biggest, was hit by a drone strike. Houthi rebels in Yemen said they did it, but the U.S. blames Iran. At the end of December, the Americans bombed targets in Iraq and Syria, killing 25 militia fighters linked to Iran. That led to people storming the U.S. Embassy in Baghdad, and now the Soleimani assassination. The fallout from the assassination has been immediate. The U.S. is urging Americans to leave Iraq immediately and is sending extra troops to the region in case of reprisal attacks. Iran announcing it has no limits to its nuclear activities. Now, ever since the attack, there's been speculation that Soleimani's death could lead to war between the U.S. and Iran. But most observers don't expect Iran will take that chance. You know, the Iranian side 
is very clear that their conventional military power is dwarfed by that of the U.S., Israel, and other regional allies of the U.S. in the region. But Iran has proven itself to be incredibly sophisticated at asymmetric warfare, at cyber attacks. Right after Soleimani was killed, the Americans were talking about de-escalating the situation. Then Trump tweeted, basically warning Iran to forget about retaliating, because if they did, he's already chosen 52 targets, one for each American held during the Iran hostage crisis in 1979. There's a part of Iranian society that do not look up to Qasem Soleimani, that does not like the religious establishment. What Donald Trump has managed to do with the killing of Qasem Soleimani has managed to unite many parts of the country and political factions. President Donald Trump has also been accused of ordering the assassination to distract the American public from his impeachment proceedings. That was bound to happen. But whatever the motivation, Donald Trump's decision to kill Soleimani has people around the world feeling a little less safe. This story is moving fast, and there's a lot more context and history to Iranian and Iraqi relations with the U.S. to get into. So have a look at aljazeera.com. It's got all the updates and lots of in-depth analysis as well. See you next week.